there. Hello nurses and hello world. This is Nurse Giselle and welcome back to my channel. is solely for demonstration purposes only as interpreted by the actor based on her understanding of the specific skill with reference to the Royal Marsden 10th edition. All information presented are public domain materials accessible to the relevant governing organization's website. Subtle similitude may be noticeable. However, this is not intended to be definitive guide to the NMC Part 2 Test of Competence or the OSCE examination. This can be helpful materials for overseas nurses or internationally educated nurses to learn and adapt to the UK clinical setting and transition effectively into practice. And yes, today I'm going to show you how to write an evidence-based practice. We've got so many evidence-based practice. Which one today? Let's have a look. How about this? Fever in children. So before we head into it, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to get notified just in case I post more OSCE videos, then hit the notification bell. And if you got a question for me and you want your question to be pop up to the top and I'll be able to see and answer those questions as soon as I can, then hit the join button. That's one of your perks as members, okay? Another perks of the membership is that you will be able to see the videos before everybody else. Please hit the join button to join the membership. And so we've chosen fever in children. Mm. First, let's go ahead for the introduction. Let's define them terms. Yeah? High temperature or fever in children A high temperature or fever is very common in young children. The temperature usually returns to normal within 1 to 4 days. My child has a high temperature. Not an unlikely event in the lives of parents with young children. Children are more likely to get a fever than adults are. A normal temperature in babies and children can vary slightly from child to child. Fever is a physiological response characterized by an elevation of body temperature above normal daily variation. A high temperature is 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or more. Aside from having a high temperature, they might feel hotter than usual when you touch their back or their chest. They also feel sweaty. They look and feel unwell. They might have also seizure or fit or what we call a febrile seizure. Causes of fever, viruses or bacteria. This can lead to common cold, middle ear infection, a urinary tract infection or gastroenteritis. They can also cause typical childhood diseases such as mumps, measles, rubella, scarlet fever or chicken pox. Vaccination a vaccination because the child's immune system is developing antibodies. Sunburn, sunstroke, or skin conditions such as urticaria or hives. High temperature can also be caused by dehydration. Children get high temperature because they have not drunk enough. This can also happen if a child suffers from a severe bout of vomiting or diarrhea. High temperature can also be caused by serious illnesses, severe conditions like pneumonia, meningitis, appendicitis, or an infection of joints or bone marrow which are rarely the cause. As nurses, what can we advise their parents or their carer? We have to give them plenty of fluids. If the baby or the child is still breastfed, continue to breastfeed as normal. Next is to look out for signs of dehydration. Give them food if they want it. Check on the child regularly, including during the night, and keep them at home. 
give them paracetamol or ibuprofen if they are distressed or uncomfortable. Make sure to check the packaging or leaflet to make sure that the medicine is suitable for the child or speak to a pharmacist or GP if unsure. Most of all, need to get medical advice if worried about the child. This is a writing or a silent station, so you will be given 10 minutes to write in silence. So how are we going to write? Okay, so you will be given a scenario that looks like this. The scenario will revolve around your patient who happens to be a child, uh, a child, okay? So let's say patient A is a child who happens to have high temperature, okay? The patient is having fever. Now, the patient is with her mother, which is, let's say, Mrs. Mrs. B, yeah? So patient A mother is Mrs. B. And Mrs. B is worried about giving a ibuprofen to patient uh, A. Okay, she's afraid of giving ibuprofen because she heard that there's a lot of issues. She's worried of giving ibuprofen to patient A who happens to be her child because she heard that there's many side effects of ibuprofen. So, as the nurse taking care of the patient and the mother of the patient is asking you, what will you say? So, in the real exam, you're going to be given a long uh, research in which you have to read through, okay? But how are you gonna write your answer? How are you going to write your evidence-based practice regarding fever in children? Let me just introduce you first to the marking criteria from the NMC regarding fever in children. Read it and memorize it by heart. There's just too many, isn't it? Uh, aside from the fact that you have to memorize the marking criteria from the API or from the scales, the 21 scales that you have to memorize, Plus 15 evidence-based practice and uh, 15 professional values. So how are you going to manage that? And this is why I'm here. So I'm going to teach you how to make sure that you know what to write on your evidence-based practice. And this is why you are there watching this video. Let's start highlighting the keywords. These keywords will help you remember when you're already writing your exam these keywords will help you remember, oh yeah, this is these are the things that I need to write. And this is in accordance to this marking criteria. By the way, this is from the NMC. You can go ahead and go to the NMC site, which is the nmc.org.uk, for you to be able to know the rest of the marking criteria, okay? I'm just here to help you make sure, uh, highlight the keywords for you to remember it when you're already writing your exam. Let's start. So you're going to be given a scenario that revolves around this scene and that's according to the marking criteria. So basically, you're going to receive a long length of research in there. You have to read it though, okay? Make sure you understand what you are reading, okay? And then you've got the marking criteria in ways you're going to base your answer. But because this is too much, I'm going to help you highlight the keywords. Let's start with the first one from this marking criteria. You have to summarize the main findings of the article summary and then you have to draw a conclusion. And after that, you have to make recommendations for the practice in which that is that is why nurses, when you are writing this evidence-based practice station, you need to make sure that it's as if you are talking to your patient or any other concerned uh, party from that uh, or, or concerned person from that specific scenario that you've just read. And this is during your exam. Okay, so let's try to highlight the keywords from this marking criteria. Let's start with this one, okay? How are you gonna highlight the keywords from this? Yes, important mechanism in fighting underlying infection. That's your main keyword in here, okay? Let's highlight that. How about this one? Try the next one, nurses. Yes, definitely, either paracetamol or ibuprofen. How about this, the third one? Safe to administer ibuprofen without food up to seven days only. Yeah, you can highlight them words. How about the next one? Okay, yeah, asthma. I highlight the word asthma. And yes, exacerbate respiratory symptoms. Okay, you can highlight them words. How about this one? We got the last one. Yeah, you can highlight them words. How about we use these words? Ibuprofen has more adverse effects than paracetamol. Yeah, 
That's it. So we are now done. That's how you highlight the words. That's how you highlight the keywords. And these keywords, if you remember this, this will help you when you get to your exam. Okay, this will help you remember the answer as you read through the articles because this is the marking criteria. And remember, nurses, marking criteria is the Bible for passing your OSC exam. All right, I'm going to give you 10 minutes for you to write your own answer. We already highlighted the keywords, so I'm going to give you 10 minutes to answer or to write your evidence-based practice regarding fever in children. You can pause this video. Time starts now. Oh, you're back too soon? <laughs> All right, have you got, have you written your answer? Okay then. So I'm going to reveal the answer. Again, just a disclaimer. This is just my answer. I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm not saying that my answers are correct. I'm not saying that I'm going to pass the OSCE exam if I write them answers. I'm just saying that this is just based from my own opinion. I've done my research. You are entitled to do yours, okay? Are you ready for my answers? Okay, before we head into it, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to get notified just in case I post more OSCE videos, more evidence-based practice and professional values, please click the notification bell. And yes, if you click the join button and become a member, all your questions will be popped up to the top and I'll be able to answer your question as soon as I can, okay? As soon as I can because life is busy at the moment, okay? And yes, if you're ready for my answer, here it is. Enjoy! I will explain to Mrs. B that fever is an important immune mechanism in fighting the underlying infection and that it is recommended to treat a fever only if it is causing distress to the child. I will tell Mrs. B to consider that both paracetamol and ibuprofen can be safely used in treating fever. I will inform Mrs. B that it is recommended that ibuprofen is taken with food to reduce potential gastric side effects and they should encourage the child to eat something when taking ibuprofen. Although, I will emphasize to Mrs. B that ibuprofen is safe to be administered with or without food in short term for up to 7 days. I will take into consideration if the child has asthma and inform Mrs. B that both ibuprofen and paracetamol can exacerbate respiratory symptoms. In conclusion, I will tell Mrs. B that healthcare professionals may perceive that ibuprofen has more adverse effects than paracetamol, although there is no evidence to support this. Thank you so much for joining and watching this video and I hope you learned something for today. This has been Nurses L. See you on the next one. Bye! We are down to our shout out section. Congratulations to our new passer. We have got a dynastic nurse. Congratulations. I would like to welcome to the team our new members, Benedicta Henry Dobor. Hi. Also, I'd like to welcome Henrietta Ogechi. Welcome to the team. Likewise, Queen Delin Onwachu. I hope I said it right. Welcome to the team. And Wilne Mariska Begin. Hi there. Another member just joined us, Rezo Valencia. Likewise goes to Osifo Aisuken or Isuken. Hi there. And last but not the least, we've got Sneha Raj. Hi there and welcome to the team.